Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another of our Double Shot interviews and I'm joined by Ollie Newland, a well-known property investor, um, AFA and author of course as well. And Ollie's here to talk about the Auckland Unitary Plan, this blueprint for Auckland's development over the next 30 years as, as the Auckland Council is describing it. Now Ollie, obviously um, the, the, there's, there's a lot of water to go under the bridge before we, we, we get this unitary plan all done and dusted. It's a draft at the moment. Shame. There's a bit of a fight with the, the government over well, the freeing up of land or, or, or high rises or whatever they're fighting over, power. Um, and, um, but, but just looking at it, broadly speaking, uh, firstly from the perspective of a property investor, how does it look to you? Well, from a property investor's point of view, it's, 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 uh, it's going to be a picnic because uh, the longer they delay the plan, the more the property speculators out there and the land bankers will be climbing into land which is going to be much more valuable in the future. Uh, so I think delay is a big mistake. They should be getting into it and making it a firm proposal as quickly as possible. What in particular do you like about the plan? Well, it's the only option we've got. We've got a choice for Auckland. We're either static, which doesn't work, we have to put a fence and barbed wire around the city, or we shrink, which doesn't work either, or we grow. Now, if we're going to grow, then, then uh, we have to grow sensibly. Otherwise, we're going to end up with a, with a town that stretches from Wellington to Wangarei. And we can't keep on, keep on gobbling up the land. So uh, this plan, I think, is the basis of a very good idea. What about, um, I mean, the debate between the council and the government seems to be centred on the council wants to keep most of the, the growth within existing urban limits. And Nick Smith, the housing minister, is talking about smashing the, uh, the urban boundary in the interests of housing affordability because he wants to build more houses outside the urban, urban limit. I, what, what do you make of that? I think there's politics at play here. I think there's a little bit of competition to who's in charge of what. Uh, I think the, the government would like to think itself as in charge of the whole thing because it's a big deal and the, the local the council would like to, to think it's in charge of the whole deal. So I think there's just a little bit of power play going on there. The bottom line is we've got to build up whether we like it or not. And if necessary, we've got to build satellite cities, if you like, and create Hamilton, a satellite city with a better motorway and railway to it. And maybe that's the answer or a combination of all those things. But growth is the only option forward. In terms of building up, I mean, that's the, the issue that uh, probably some of us NIMBYs who live within Auckland are, <laughs> Not uh, my backyard. Are, are, yes, <laughs> are, are, are sort of most concerned about. Um, do you think that enough New Zealanders want to live in high rises? No, probably right. I think all New Zealanders would like to live on a, on a quarter acre section with, with a nice house, but if you want to live in the city, you're going to have to put up with living in apartments. And unfortunately, the, the rubbishy apartments that have been put up in the inner city, the, the dog boxes, have spoiled, spoiled the impression. If you live in a nice apartment or have been in nice apartments, they can be very nice ways of living indeed. Uh, so I think that's, that's these dog boxes have spoiled the, the taste a little bit. But I think most people will have to make up their mind whether they're going to live in apartments for, for security reasons, if nothing else, and, and economic reasons, or they're going to have to live in the country, as it were. And um, just in terms of, uh, I guess, the zoning changes that the unitary plan is proposing, obviously a lot of areas, are, uh, well, a lot of, some areas are going to be zoned for apartments of mm. four, six, eight, eighteen 18 storeys. Um, other areas will be this, this uh, mixed sort of housing model which will mm. allow some terraced housing. So if you're a property investor, should you go around and, and buy up uh, land that's going to be zoned for apartments? If you've got a long view, and we're talking a 30-year plan here, uh, it, it, you should be buying up land in those areas which are likely to have the densest uh, zoning as you possibly can. But you have to have a very long view and a very deep pocket. Uh, so you have to have a 10 or 15 year view on things at least, I would think at the rate things are going. But it could be a, a, a quite an interesting bun fight when the property speculators and the property land bankers get into it. I'm afraid I'm at an age when it's too late for me, but there's a lot of young people coming up behind me that, that uh, may take advantage of it. And what's your take more, more broadly on, on, I guess, firstly, the residential property market in the early stages of this year, and, and secondly, I guess, the, um, the rest of the market? Well, the, there's a, too much hype about the property market at the moment. The, uh, the, the, the talk that the Auckland is, uh, or the property market is booming is only partly correct. It's booming in certain areas. It's not booming in others. You go and ask people in Tauranga if they think the market is booming, or, or Palmerston North or Wellington for that matter. Uh, it, it's only patchy, and it's an Auckland only. It's an Auckland thing. 
and I think it'll fizzle out uh, in a year or two. But you've got to let prices go where they where they want to go because most of the time it's 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 just a swapping of equities. No, nobody's affected. It's the first home buyer that's affected. That's all. The rest of us, uh, I've never heard anybody complain about the price of the or the value of their house going up. Now, um, the Reserve Bank is is talking about um, increasing the, the the levels of capital that banks have to hold against high loan to value um, ratio loans. Yeah. Um, I guess they're, they're getting a little bit concerned about how much of that's going on at the moment. If that sort of thing comes in, what sort of impact do you think that might have? It'll hurt only one class of people, and that's the first home buyer. Because those of, those of us, and you include, I suppose, who've got an equity in their property of a decent size, won't be affected by that. If you've got 20, 30 percent down payment on a property, you're going to walk into the door, no problem. It's the first home buyer that's got very little money that needs help. So they are the ones that should be targeted. It's no use having a broad brush effect, a broad brush attack on, on the whole property market. Target the first home buyer, as they do in most other countries, give them a leg up and get onto the property ladder and leave the rest alone. It, it's a pendulum effect out there. Things swing one way, then they swing the other, and they sort themselves out in the end. Interfering is very dangerous. And you wrote recently again on, on the concept of a capital gains tax, uh, not one that you're, you're very fond of. Are you, are you concerned that we're going to get one in New Zealand now? Well, if some of the politicians of the left-wing variety would have their way, we might get one. But it is so dangerous because, because any tax on any property feeds into the price in the end. I can't name, and you can't name one thing that's gone down in price because a tax has been imposed on it. So if you imagine you put a tax on property deals or property transactions, it'll feed into prices as sure as God made little apples. Well, thanks for that, Ollie. That's Ollie Newland, property investor, and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.